Hi, right, tubes. And I got the uh, the 1928 FH laid out, and uh, not only I laid out for you guys to see what we we've done, but uh, to see if I forgot something. And sure enough, you know a few things I did forget. So uh, let's take a look at it. All right here's uh, this is the governor's the counterbalance, I guess you want to call it. I got no way to pick it up here. Hold it. All right, like I said, I painted this uh, silver just to break up some of the black. But this is, this is actually a governor in here. And like I said in an earlier video, this is what the engine had. And fortunately, the guy I bought this from had this. He put this in there too. And this is what was on there. But I think this is for a later model. I mean, it would have worked and everything, but uh, I'd rather go with the period corrector to the right year. So I think I'm pretty sure this is the right year. So I painted this up anyway, and uh, I, I could use that on another project or another engine. And then we got the flywheel, and the flywheel is in, in, in decent shape. Uh, the magnets are good and everything. And we got the, the straight crank. It's not a new crank, but it's a straight crank. And the kick pedal. And here's the, the coil that Mike Reed did. We really, he checked with a meter, and, and it reads good, but we, <clears throat> we haven't had a chance to check it for spark. And uh, I spent about an hour making gaskets for this thing. You know, and they came out good. And the uh, funny thing is, the guy I bought it from had, had bought a set of gaskets, so I really didn't have to do that. And good thing I, I made them and checked everything because, uh, and he had the original, because you need this. You know, this uh, actually seals your head up. And that's something you can't really uh, duplicate. They, uh, I think originally they just had a piece of uh, gasket material in there, and, and it probably would have worked, but uh, this is what belongs there. So, I'll, I'll probably use this and uh, use, <clears throat> use my gaskets since I made them. And I'll use that on another engine too. And here's a, it's like a PVC bow, you know, positive crankcase ventilation. It's funny, you got this big long tube here. I made a gasket for that too. And it's just a hole in the bottom, you know, just uh, so the crankcase gets some air. And we got this, this came with it. It's a brand new oil pan. And the Kickstarter is all painted, ready to go on. And where we're at. All right, here's the thing I forgot about. I forgot I was going to buy some uh, brass and make one of these. Because uh, this one here is an uh, old, uh, somebody redid the bottom here. I mean, it works and everything, but uh, it is going to be a show engine. So we want it to look good. And then I thought I was going to have to buy a spring. And here's a, a governor spring, because the one I have was stretched. But... Uh, the previous owner had bought that too, so that's good. And here's the block all painted up. The block came out good. And uh, like I said, I was checking to see what we forgot. And we forgot to uh, hone it out. You know, it's got a little bit of surface rust on there. Not very bad, but uh, it's got to be done. You know? And it would have been uh, preferable to do it before we painted it, but uh, I guess we'll just put a diaper on it or something. Try and keep some of the oil off of it. Let's go over here. The piston and rings are all good. They all cleaned up real nice. Here's that part I made, the spacer for the governor. And the gears. This holds the gear on. And the head, the head came out nice. I, I was able to save the valves. You know, and they all work good. Got a new spark plug in there. That's where that little ring goes. Let's see where it's at. Got a little ring sits right in here. And that's your head gasket. So, uh, so far everything's looking good. And then, like I say, you know, I, I laid this out not only for you to see, but for me to see what, what we have to do to, before we do it. And lucky I did because I forgot. We got to make a gasket for the carburetor here. That's all cleaned up and we put that in the ultrasonic cleaner. Cam gear looks good. Clean up all nuts and bolts. This uh, pushes one of your push rods. And this here uh, is your kick pedal. And these here are your two push rods. And these hold your shroud on. And this here just uh, it goes in your... That's where you fill your oil filler on both sides here. You can fill it on either side. 
And then uh, you got the muffler. That was uh, a reproduction that came with it. And the base, the base cleaned up nice and painted up nice. So that's all ready to go. And I was able to straighten the backing plate here. You know, it's got a little bit of a, not a twist, but just a, a real slight tweak to it. But once I bolt it down, you won't see it. You won't see it anyway, but. And then the shroud, the shroud came out pretty good. That was in pretty good shape. So, uh, I guess I'll, uh, I'll hone this out. If I got time and I feel like setting the camera up, I'll, I'll show you uh, me doing that. And then make the gasket for the carburetor. And then, uh, I think maybe I'll let one of the guys put it together. Maybe I'll put some of the little tiny bullshit on there, you know, like this. That it only wastes their time, but uh, they enjoy putting them together and getting them running, so we'll see what happens. Alright, let me put the camera down and uh, hone this bitch out. Alright, I'm going to hone this out now. I put this little towel around here, this little paper towel around here, just uh, in case some wheel jumps out of there. I doubt it though, but uh, for the two minutes it took to do that, it'll save me uh, cleaning in between all the fins and stuff. So, Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start honing this out and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we're done. Alright, we honed that out and we're happy the way it came out. I mean, it's not the greatest, but uh, it'll do. You know, if it blows a little smoke, uh, we understand. If I was going to use this for uh, to run something, I, I might have boarded out 10 over or something like that, but uh, I think it'll be okay. All right, I'll show you what we're working on now. Come on back to the little bench here. All right, I'm putting a... I just bolted the coil up. It was just sitting there before. And... Here's an original one. I took the original one just to make sure. I, I, I knew how to hook this up and everything, but uh, I had this other one just to make sure. And uh, here's the wire that comes from the coil. goes up to the capacitor here. I think they call them condensers back then. And then just goes right through it to the points. But what I did on this new one here is I put eyelets. They actually had this. This is all soldered in, hardwired. Which is good, you know, if you run a machinery and stuff like that, but we're going to be at shows and stuff. And if uh, a capacitor goes bad or a show or something like that, we could easily get one and uh, just uh, replace it. But chances of having a soldering iron up there is uh, pretty, pretty much not happening. So I'm going to bring this inside and I put this little terminal on. I'm going to solder that one on. And then uh, solder a little jumper from here to here. And then even a, a spark plug wire. I'm going to make a spark plug wire. And I think I got the original here. Here's the original. And this, this terminal looks like it's uh, brass. And I'm going to try and save that. I got, I got new terminals in there, but they're, they're chrome. And if I could save this one, I'd rather have that brass. But uh, there's something I want to show you. On these... Uh, on these coils and a lot of them, even the Maytags and, and most of the brakes and everything, almost all your engines, you got this uh, little hole and that's where your spark plug wire goes. And you notice there's no solder on there because you're only supposed to loop it through there and crimp it. And up here on this other one, let me throw some uh, light on there for you. I don't know if the light's helping or hurting you, but uh, we're going to give it to you anyway. Okay. Somebody soldered this on here, and you know that's a no-no because uh, sometimes it'll just burn right through and, and uh, burn the enamel off of these uh, the coil. So hopefully this this coil is still good. You know sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't, but uh, it's only supposed to be crimped on there. People see it's it's not soldered and they think it's uh, it's not right, but it's not supposed to be soldered. So all right, let's uh, take this thing inside and solder it up. Alrighty, we got us all hooked up here. I got me a little jumper going from here to here, and uh, I soldered these eyelets where they belong. And I even put a spark plug wire in here, and got it crimped on there. Yeah, this uh, this little clamp here keeps this secured and pushed up against here, and it's crimped in place, so you shouldn't have any trouble with that. Alright, now we got to do this little hole here where the wire comes through. Uh, for your kill switch outside and just hooks to here, grounds everything out. And that's attached to here. And uh, the original wire and the cloth on here is all in good shape, so I'm going to leave that. 
and I cleaned the contacts up here where this uh, this little button uh, shorts it out so uh, we're going to uh, take this back plate and rivet it on you see these holes this belongs on that's uh, originally it was riveted on you know with solid rivets or uh, buck rivets whatever they call but uh, I'm just going to use uh, blind rivets or pop rivets whatever you want to call them and we should be fine I was able to save this so uh, I'm happy about that all right, let me throw this on this back and plate and let's uh, rivet in place. All right, we're all riveted up there and it, uh, it fits pretty good. And got the wire hooked up. I did put a little, uh, about an inch of shrink tube on there where the bare wire was. I mean, the rest of it, the rest of it's okay. The cloth's okay. And uh, even this plate, you know, this plate is a little bent. Maybe, yeah, you can see it there. But it's uh, it's not bent bad enough. It looks worse on the inside than it does on the outside. And even here, you know, it was uh, it was cracked. I was able to put a little washer on there and uh, pull the rivet in on it. So it's uh, like I say, it's pretty secure. And that, that warp, I don't think that warp is going to affect me. Like I say, on the outside here, it you know you're really not going to see any. of This is all going to be tucked in behind the motor, but. Uh, I think what I might do is uh, put some clear silicone in there just to keep them dirt and dust and maybe some little critters out, you know, from building nests in there. But uh, I was I was lucky to save this uh, this plate here. You know, when, when people take these off, they usually take screwdrivers and, and try and uh, pry them off, and you can't do that. You know, this is pop metal. You see how it's cracked here. So there's, you know, it's even tough finding a used one because so many people uh, break them trying to take them off but uh, while I got this off I think I might uh, I got the crank right there I think I might throw the crank in there and uh, adjust the timing that's one less thing the guys have to do when they put it together all right I've got us about a, a tight 20 there and that's that's what it should be 20 thousands and uh, I don't think this warp is going to affect us. You know, the magneto or the flywheel here has about a quarter of an inch drop in it. You know, so I don't think that'll that'll affect us or the the rivet heads here. If the, the rivet heads, I could I could I could smash down if I had to, but uh, and the warp, you know, I guess I can grind that, but uh, I think we'll be okay. So uh, all right, now we just got to throw this thing together and see what uh, see what happens. Alrighty, enough of this.